For your typical pre-built gaming computer, this challenge would honestly be a walk in the park. However, this does not appear to be your typical pre-built. Today we find out if $100 can improve a top-of-the-line pre-built computer. This is the 35L from Omen, which is rocking a Ryzen 7 8700G and a Ryzen 4070. Just kidding, this is an RTX 4080 Super. But now, the harsh reality with a lot of these pre-built is that while they like to show off these, you know, super nice CPUs and GPUs, they can often skimp in other areas of the computer, such as a sketchy power supply, not as much RAM as you would like to use, or low quality storage. So today, we're going to see if that's the case for this 35L. Starting with the power supply, you'll notice that it's actually made by Omen instead of some other third party. It's the very first Omen computer that uses Omen components like their own power supply. We have a thousand watts here, it's fully modular, and it's rated for 80 plus gold. And I mean, that's more than enough wattage to power our 4080 Super and our CPU, so uh, that's pretty solid. They did not skimp at that at all. Now, the one thing that's jumping out at me is this part of the motherboard right here. I mean, it's not blank, but you would kind of expect a motherboard to have radiator fins or some type of passive cooling on top of all of these MOSFETs. Okay, so here, for example, on this motherboard, we have this metal covering that helps cool those MOSFETs. Those MOSFETs are in charge of like helping regulate voltage to all of the different components and they can get hot. So it is a bit interesting that in this computer, all those MOSFETs are just, you know, just kind of open and exposed. So I think really the question here is, will the VRM get too hot when using this computer? And if so, how will that affect the performance of the entire build? But it also feels like a huge pain to replace the motherboard when every other component like stays the same. So here's what I have proposed. So over, oh, whoops. Over here inside of my box of ridiculous PC accessories, if we look deep enough, ah, yes, we have VRM heat sinks. Now, is this a necessary upgrade? Well, it turns out not really. Even without them in playing games at 4K, our CPU showed no signs of instability whatsoever, but they just kind of feel right to have and they only cost five bucks. So now time to figure out what to do with the remaining $95. Okay, so another thing is the RAM. Let's take a look at that. As you can see here, we do have four sticks of HyperX Fury. It's an RGB stick, DDR5. A lot of times we'll find pre built that only have a single stick of RAM, so you can't even take advantage of like the dual channel. But this has four sticks of RAM. Wow, okay, we actually have 64 gigs. So each of these sticks are 16 gigs a piece. The delete F12, F2, okay. It was worth checking. Here we can see that the current memory clock speed is 3600 megahertz, but the maximum clock speed is 5600 megahertz. Let's see if we can up those clock speeds on the Omen Gaming Hub. Inside of here, we can optimize like certain specific things about our computer. Oh, okay, okay, so there we go. So the default is that 3600, but here's that turbo. So we don't even have to use BIOS. We can just click it in software. And if we take a look, yep, it did increase the speed of our RAM. So no need for an upgrade. All we had to do was click a simple button. But what else? Okay, one kind of hidden component that we haven't looked at yet is the storage, the SSD. Well, first of all, we can see that there are two of them, two terabyte SSD. The other one's a two terabyte as well, but let's see for ourselves. Up until this point, this computer has been completely toolless to disassemble, which is amazing. All right, let's take a closer look at this SSD. Wow, that's actually a really nice heatsink. It actually encapsulates the entire bottom side, thermal pads on the top and the bottom. It's like a perfect little SSD sandwich. And here we can see it is in fact that WDSN 5000S, 6000 megabyte per second read speed, Gen 4 as well. I suppose realistically we could use that $100 to increase the storage in this pre-built. And the one potential downside, again, looking back at the motherboard is I believe there's only two NVMe slots, which are already occupied. So if we wanted to do that, we would have to go with a SATA SSD or a SATA hard drive. But that said, we do have four terabytes of NVMe storage inside of this pre-built. So that's likely going to be good enough for most use cases. Unless, of course, you want to download the next Call of Duty game, which will probably be like 10 million terabytes. <laughs> Another place that pre-built PCs could potentially skip on is the airflow. Now, Omen does claim that this PC is like significantly cooler than even the 40L, which is a larger PC case. And it does have Omen specific fans, as opposed to using, you know, again, like a third party fan manufacturer. But would it be beneficial to instead, you know, upgrade those fans to something else? Uh, let's find out. I mean, I will say cohesive this does look like a pretty nice computer. It comes in like a few different variations. This is the one with like the glass cover and uh, all black. They do have like a panda one, which is a black and white as well as an all white. So we'll go ahead and launch some stress tests. We do have some options in this gaming hub where we could set like the performance mode of the fans. Let's go ahead and set it to turbo so we have like the best chance of cooling. And with that, our CPU is at 
at 100% utilization, but sticking at a very cool 62 degrees Celsius. Wow, I can't believe the CPU is staying that cool. I'll let it run for a little bit. I guess the uh, the AIO in particular is, is doing its job. I also suppose this gives us an insight into how that uh, the VRM is being affected by the extra heat as well. Doesn't appear to be getting too hot. If so, it would definitely be leading to some like instability when the CPU is at 100% utilization for like a super long time. But yeah, this thing's kicking and it's not really even that loud. Okay, so at this point, we've taken a look at the power supply, taken a look at the RAM, the storage was solid, the cooling itself seems pretty solid. Obviously, we're not going to upgrade the CPU or the GPU with $100. This is rocking a Ryzen 7 8700G, so it does have that built-in NPU, much faster for doing any type of neural network tasks. So text to image prompts are a bit faster, AI editing should be a bit faster, and like any type of like model training should be faster as well. How do you guys feel about NPUs, by the way? They're taking up more and more space inside of CPUs to optimize for those like AI tasks. Do you use those AI tasks? Personally, I use AI editing features a lot, especially when it comes to rotoscoping or applying these like effects that would take a really long time manually. Text to image, I don't really use all that often, but man, with like some of these technologies that keep getting announced, building an entire app with prompts, that kind of stuff makes me bullish on MPUs, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. And then of course, the other side of this that we're definitely not going to improve at $100 is an RTX 4080 Super. It can easily handle 4K gaming if you want, or if you're like me, my preference is 1440p gaming at a higher refresh rate, but I mean, this thing, no problem. I actually do use a 4080 Super in my, my main computer that I use every day, so I do like it. Plus, this one is the Omen variant, so it even has the Omen logo in RGB. This thing is solid. The case itself does have this really nice support beam. That is one thing that, you know, we could have used our $100 on to help prevent any sag, but this thing is not going anywhere. So aside from spending a few bucks on these VRM heat sinks, we're probably not gonna improve the performance of this computer with our remaining money. But that said, I do have an idea of what else we could try to upgrade. Upgrade here being uh, a very uh, loose term. <laughs> Now our pre cool computer is the first of its kind to have a pull chain power switch. <laughs> now, did this little upgrade cost $95 to bring our total to 100? Uh, not even close. Honestly, I think that's just a testament to the 35L. This is a pretty decked out pre-built computer. Because while 100 bucks could go a pretty long way in other pre-builds to say improve the RAM, stabilize the power supply, upgrade the storage, for this one, uh, what did we do? We upgraded the MOSFETs and, uh, you know, added a pull chain. Because quite honestly, we didn't have to upgrade anything else. It is still very clear to me that the motherboard is sort of like the weakest link in the chain here, but even then it has not proven itself to be an issue. Honestly, the most realistic thing with $100 for a PC like this would be to like upgrade your monitor. If you're not running 4K or at least 1440p 144 hertz, you're really not truly taking advantage of the entire power of this computer. The fact that there's a thousand watt power supply means that hypothetically, if you wanted to upgrade the GPU to like a 5000 series when it comes out and like requires a lot more wattage, you could do that, like you have the overhead to do so. There is space down here for a SATA hard drive or an SSD. It's nice that it's here and nice that they like cable managed around it. If I assemble this computer, the wires would be like totally taking over that space. And actually speaking of cable management, let's take a look in the back here to see what exactly we're dealing with. In terms of upgradability, cable management does matter quite a bit. Some pre-builds have or, like such unwieldy cables that you don't even want to mess with them. But okay, back here, we do actually have a pretty extensive fan controller, which is interesting because because we don't actually have much more room for fans, but we could hypothetically add more. You can see up here, we do have some extra PCIe cables in case we want to add say like a GPU that doesn't have like that special connector from Nvidia. Okay, these clips are actually really nice. You see like this little guy right here, Normally this would just be like a normal, what are those called? That you would have to like completely snip apart if you wanted to like move this cable around for an upgrade. But this appears to be like a reusable version of that. Check it out. You can just like undo it like that without having to like cut it. 
That's really nice. I do think it's clear that a lot of thought and a lot of design went into making this 35L. Very clearly a very nice pre-built PC. But with that, I would love to know your thoughts on this Omen 35L. It is available right now on HP's website as well as at Best Buy, with the base model starting at around $1,300. I will leave a link for this in the description down below in case you want to learn more. And uh, if you're curious about how to make a pull string uh, power switch, let me know and I'll make a tutorial about that as well. <laughs> Thanks to HP and Omen for sending this out for me to play around with it. Uh, but that's all I have for you today. I've been Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one. Oh yeah.